hello everybody i hope you're doing well if you know it say it with me i got my coffee got my bible and of course i have all of you don't forget to like share subscribe to this video help me overcome the facebook the instagram and the youtube algorithms to get this out there to everybody and we're going to give some hope to everybody today today is national free shipping day i don't know um if people have any kind of special free shipping offers but if you might want to check everywhere because it is technically free shipping day and if that just helps you save some money you are welcome all right welcome to mark chapter one so we are walking through god's word every day we have got through almost all the books of the new testament we're starting the third to last book we've got mark luke and revelation before we got through the entire new testament and we're starting mark today I'm going to read you a verse that just means so much to me. Now, first of all, a little background about the book of Mark. I don't know if you know this or not. Mark was actually written under the direction of the apostle Peter. So Mark was a young uh, Jewish guy who was also a translator. He could translate Greek and different languages. And Paul wasn't real good with Greek. And so when Paul would go to Rome in different places, he needed a translator, someone to help him. This is according to, to, to history. And so Mark was one of these people who would help him and help tutor him in, in Greek and all that sort of stuff. And so Mark's gospel is a collection of the sermons and insights of Peter. And so Peter's kind of a ghost writer to the book of Mark. And so I think that's really awesome because you also see some of Peter's biggest foibles, some of his biggest mistakes are in the book of Mark. And so he was very honest about his journey with Jesus. And so it's kind of awesome to think that the apostle Peter actually had maybe a little bit of a hand in writing the book of Mark. And the verse I want to read you today is from the very first. I mean, he hits the ground running in the book of Mark, and he tells this amazing story. And what it is, is there's all these different people surrounding Jesus. It's this idea that once Jesus' public ministry started, he was constantly just being bombarded with all these people. I mean, he's healing people, and he's teaching people, and he's feeding people, and there's just always a crowd. It seems like just a moving circus everywhere Jesus is. And in the middle of this circus, these people are crying out for healing. Well, they, they're probably not the only ones. But these folks are. And so in the middle, I mean, just imagine for a moment, chaos all around you. And in the middle of that, there are these people who are crying out for Jesus. And then this is what the Bible says in Mark chapter 1, verse 41. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out and touched him and said, I am willing, be healed. Now what I love about this is this person didn't come up and go, hey, you deserve to heal me because I've been waiting in line a long time to get to you. Or you deserve to heal me because I shouldn't have been created with this issue anyway. I mean, just, just he wasn't negative. He just said, you know what, God? You don't owe me anything. You don't owe me anything. But if you would like to, and I sure would like for you to, I would love to be healed. And Jesus moved with compassion. Of course, of course, be healed. And what I love about that so much is that in the middle of this crowd of people, people wanting to ask him a few questions, people wanting to say thank you to him, people maybe wanting to give him something, people wanting to take away something, other people, hey, my miracle, I need a miracle worse than you do. And it's just all these different, Jesus was constantly, but in the middle of all this chaos, he zoomed in and he had time for the one. Can I tell you, there's roughly 7 billion people on this planet. And you imagine at any given moment, how many people are praying desperate prayers praying prayers of thanksgiving, praying prayers of petition. Maybe people are praying, God, if you're really real, here's your last chance. All these different things are going on and God is big enough to handle all of those things. But if you think about it in 7 billion people and then then you, you get on the Facebooks and you see all these other people and you see people with different types of platforms. It's just, just people, people, people. And you wonder, do I really matter in this life? You know what? You matter to Jesus. He can hear your prayer above the noise. And here's the thing. He doesn't just hear it and recognize it, but he wants to speak into it. And this person who's probably crying out, going, I don't know if Jesus can even hear me, but I'm trying. Jesus was able to pierce right through the noise and go, I am willing. And I want to tell you this. Maybe you feel like you're drowning in the chaos of life. Maybe you feel like no one is paying attention. You, you feel like you're crying out alone in the dark. Can I tell you, someone is paying attention and his name is Jesus and he loves you. And he's saying, of course I'm willing. I want to do something in your life. And so today, instead of giving up, Try one more time. Call out to Jesus because he wants to answer you. And I hope I, that brings you just a little bit of hope. But tell you what I do know too. That is that Jesus loves you more than you realize. He's for you more than you can imagine. You're probably doing better than you realize. You know why? Because you got up one more day. 
God has not changed his mind about you. Hope you have a great day. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow on Daily Hope.